watching sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it. I'm We're in Rochester again. Whoa. Again, bro. But with Milia this time because she wants to see the um, bookshop we went to. And she bothered to wake up. In the last video. So if you go back on my channel, there's a video where we had a day out in Rochester. It says Dickensian vibes, I think, and there's a picture of the castle. The what and vibes? And we today, we're going to go to this lovely bookshop and it's a much nicer day. Last time we were here, it's pouring with rain and today it's going to get up to 17 degrees and it's that. sunny. I don't want it, Dad. Phoebe is refusing her coat. It's that warm. Mind out. Dad, can I put it back in the car? Well, do you think you're going to be warm enough? Yeah. Anyone else have this constant argument about wearing coats? I'm wearing a fluffy... Ow! <laughs> <laughs> ah. Look yeah, at that I sky. Really Amazing. I spoke a lot about the history of Rochester Castle in my last Rochester vlog, so I'll just briefly say that it was built around 1127 and the Norman Tower Keep is made from Kentish ragstone and stands at 113 feet high. We won't be going into the castle today because it's closed on Mondays, as is the other castle that we love nearby, so we might go to another castle tomorrow. Last time we were here it was raining and now there are people sitting about having picnics in the sun. We need to go and find some lunch. <laughs> Wanna go and see if we can get a table? Yeah. <laughs> So much. What was it? Brittany? Yeah, it was Brittany. I loved it. Can we come back? I said I loved it. You move that when you're older. There are loads of great charity and antique shops on Rochester High Street. Someone in this charity shop really likes Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> Keep looking. Um, can I get 50 pounds of the Paralympics as well, please? Thank you. We're sitting outside the cathedral, having our toffee crumble. It's really quite warm in the sun. Abba, baba. <laughs> Phoebe spent some pocket money. And I think we might have a little wander into the cathedral after we finish walking up and down the high street. I think we? we might do, yeah. We're now off into this antique shop, which is in a gorgeous, rickety old building over three floors. So join us for a good little rummage round. Thank you.
I'm always on the lookout for the perfect vintage wine glasses. No joy this time. Creepy. Store 104, books, yarn, and a cafe. This is it. Yarn and books. Mm. Sounds pretty good. It's a big one. Oh no, I only bought three new books, but am I going to buy this one? Probably. <laughs> We got absorbed in here for quite a while and of course I had to fondle the yarn and have a good look around at the knitting section. You didn't get to experience it. <laughs> they had a great selection of knitting books that I've never seen before, so I spent quite a bit of time having a nice browse through all of those. And I was excited to see more it, which is a dedicated crochet magazine, but I already have this issue. If it was the latest issue, I would have bought it. I did buy myself a book and I'll show you that later on in the vlog. And I was delighted to find when I got to the till that the guy was knitting and he said I could take a little film of him. Yeah. And oh. mm -hmm. you dyed the yarn yourself. Yeah, well, so my cousin dyed the yarn, and so this is Erica Knight's um, oh, okay. local, but yeah. in the Aran way. Oh. Um, and then, yeah, we did like an indigo dyeing workshop, and I'd seen... Let's buy it, Pop. That one's for sale. <laughs> yeah, these pubs for sale. Of course these pub for sale. Why does it say pub for sale? Because they, they want to... Um... Dan wants to buy a pub. A purple pub. This is Eastgate House. It's a 16th and 17th century townhouse that's been a family home, a Victorian boarding school, a hostel, and it's now a museum. It was also the inspiration for Charles Dickens. He used it a couple of times. He used it in the Pickwick Papers and in his unfinished novel, The Mystery of Edwin Drood. going right. <laughs> We're heading to Rochester Cathedral now. The second oldest cathedral in England, the first being Canterbury, which is also in Kent. Rochester Cathedral was founded in 604 AD, which is um, a, lo a lot of years ago. 1400 years ago or thereabouts. It's old. We're going to have a wander around. I've just had blue raspberry jolly rancher. You're not you're gonna feel sick. That's my bum. We are my whole mouth's gonna be blue. <laughs> we are in the garden of Rochester Cathedral. It's a very tuneful songbird behind us. And there are two magpies on the lawn. 
and I've never been in the gardens of Rochester Cathedral ever and it's absolutely beautiful I sat on my water I can imagine this is very peaceful I can see them I'll do a little 360 for you so you can see what it looks like see if you can spot the magpies there's two of them two for joy and the castle it's right behind where we're sitting sorry if I did that a bit quick and made you feel sick and our bench is dedicated to Gladys Warren 1897 to 1965 Sit with Gladys. How you doing, Gladys? <laughs> I'm coming down the hill towards you. Oh. <laughs> we are back in the car. It's been an absolutely lovely day and we are now we have plans. We don't know if they're gonna work, so I'm not gonna say what they are just in case they don't, but we have special plans for dinner. <laughs> and I bought myself a book in the bookshop. And the man was which I, and the man was knitting, but I will show you what I bought um, when we get home. Word. Word up, my guy. <laughs> you you destroyed our Taylor Swift. Oh, I did it again. We got home and I went upstairs to edit for a bit and I felt so tired that I fell asleep. I never sleep in the day. I just slept for another two and a half hours absolutely out of the count. But when I woke up, I didn't know what was happening. I thought it was morning and I go, oh, anyway. It's now about half past six. So we had this idea that instead of getting a takeaway, which are very expensive and, you know, energy bills, we would get an Iceland takeaway because Iceland do um, yo sushi stuff. So we bought a ton of yo sushi stuff. So for 20 quid, we're going to have a takeaway for a family of four. So Lydia chose Korean star fried chicken. So this is what she always gets when we go to yo sushi. Um, and I like this as well. So we're going to have some Korean fried, Korean style fried chicken. And then oh, Dan chose some crispy prawn. How do you say that word? Bao. Bao, yeah. Bao uh, kit, which I'll have as well. That looks lovely. And we got some um, popcorn cauliflower, which obviously we can all have, but most importantly, it's vegetarian. We've got some tempura 
prawns, which I absolutely love. Oh, we've got some sweet chilli sauce and we've got vegetable gyoza as well. Oh, and we've got um, adami beans as well, because when we go to Yoshushi, they always have the adami, Yoshushi. <laughs> they always have the adami beans uh, with sea salt on them. So we're gonna do adami beans as well. Okay. Lily, I've got a charity shop bargain. So she needs cowboy boots for her West End performance in May. And uh, her drama principal has been going on about it. And these were in the charity shop. They are brand new. Doesn't look like they've ever been worn. They're from Next and uh, leather. And they're 20 pounds. So she's got her cowboy boots. Might put some spurs on them to cowboy them up. <laughs> Lilia got an absolute bargain in the charity shop. She got a sundress. It's exactly your size, isn't it? Yeah. How much was it? Six pounds. It's six, so six gorgeous. Pounds. She was determined to get a sundress and it was made for you. Yes. And Dan got a TM Lewin shirt as well. That's in the wash. So we all did very well. And I treated myself to a book from Store 104, which is such an epic shop. They were actually doing a bit of decorating, so the top floor wasn't as accessible as usual. But I bought myself this book, so I've never seen it before, and it looked amazing. I read, like, the prologue whilst I was in the shop. It's The Golden Fleece, A Journey Through Britain's Knitted History. It is by Esther Rutter, and I was talking to the guy on the till about it, and he said it's an absolutely lovely book. He was knitting, and the yarn that he was knitting with uh, was actually, they did a workshop on indigo dyeing, and he was knitting a shawl with some of the indigo dyed yarn. It's a really great shop. If you're ever in Rochester, it's really worth stopping at Store 101. What a, what a great idea for a shop. Books and yarn and a cafe. What more could you want in life? Can't wait to get stuck into this. That beeping means we need to go and put things in the oven. No word. <laughs> oh. What's up? All yarn included is four ply fingering weight and 7525 Merino nylon. That's pretty. What is this? Oh, it's a card. It's it so up. gorgeous. You'll find it. Oh, it's Hillary in Australia. She must have ordered it to have it sent direct to me. Well, I shouldn't see this then, because this is for my birthday. Well, it's, a bit, uh, it's a bit late now. It's a bit late now, and I've seen it. Oh, I'm so excited. I've received an early birthday present from an absolutely lovely lady called Hilary. She lives in Australia, and she sent it direct from this seller, Hen Henny Penny Makes. I have not heard of Henny Penny Makes, but they have got the coolest logo of all time. It's a chicken made up of a patchwork of knitting. And she sent me this. A whole collection of minis, and some of them are here. And some of them are on these little, cool little holders, and they are all beautiful. Wow! Oh, Hilary, I'm going to drop you a message. This one actually is like chicken colours, isn't it? Yeah. I might put this away for my birthday. It's so precious. Post-dinner punditry, Dan. Oh. What did we think of our Iceland fake-away takeaway? I thought it was really nice. I enjoyed it. I didn't. I thought it all felt a bit beige-ish, didn't it? Yeah, I mean... Even though we did veg and stuff to go with it, and the sauce for Lilia's Korean chicken was like three times as hot as it is in the restaurant, so... So bless her, she couldn't eat it, but she scraped the sort of batter off the outside of a couple of pieces. Yeah. I'll eat it, because I love spicy, but she's not a big fan of spicy, is she? She is not a spice girl. <laughs> so 
so yeah, I don't know She's, if I... If she was, was a Spice Girl, she'd be beige Spice. She'd be beige Spice, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I would do that again, but it was fun. It was a fun thing to do for the Easter holidays, wasn't it? The Just, tempura prawns were yummy. They were good. The tempura prawns were lovely. The and the were nice. popcorn cauliflower was lovely as well. Um, but I don't think, I don't think Lydia would agree. But, uh, Phoebe would agree. Yeah. So, there we go. But now, I never want to think about food again. And I'm going to go and sit down and do a bit of editing. What are you going to do, Dan? Lilia's in the shower. Phoebe's going to have a shower in a minute. I'm going to... I'm, I'm two episodes away from finishing this year's Great British Oh, you are, aren't you? So I'm going to carry on watching I'm Not even two episodes, I'm one and a half episodes away. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. When you finish that, we'll have to teach you to knit. You won't have anything else to do. I'm literally I'm watching TV programmes to fill, fill the gap waiting to be caught in it, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to find things to distract myself. You've because, started you the know. whole thing, you know. It's all I get now is comments. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and um, I could teach myself to knit, but Ali promised me mm -hmm. she would. He's holding me to it. What made you decide to want to knit? Because you never, you, at one point you said, and I quote, I am never going to learn to knit ever. Well, apart from running and Lego, I don't really have anything else to occupy my spare time apart from watching TV. So if I can learn to knit, you can do thing about knitting. You can do that and watch TV at the same well, time. Well, yeah, see, you know, you can't do it. In you front. see my master plan of becoming more and more sedentary. <laughs> But no, I want to learn to knit because I want to understand what you, so when you're talking about knitting, you're not speaking gobbledygook and I actually understand what you're saying. But also, you seem to really enjoy it. We've got some lovely things around the house. So I thought, well, why can't I try and do something? I think you'd find it quite, I know you're not a stressy person, but it is a very calming thing after a busy day at work. Yes. But so for a can of beer and Cans of beer and two hours of TV. <laughs> it's now nine o'clock and Phoebe and Blake, the Easter bunny, are going to help me open my birthday advent. So I'll flip the camera around and you can one? choose which one. I chose this one. Or a yarn shaped one. It should have a little note at the top. Does it have a note? Oh, it's on the inside. What is the answer? Four ply. What's the name of the colourway? Can you see? Is it that yeah. bit there? Lightning. Lightning. <gasps> that's Ooh, pretty. That's a nice one. That reminds me of like, I don't know. Lightning? Yeah, <laughs> kind of. In the, in the thunderstorm. Golden seed. Golden, I follow only golden. Golden.